Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Porto Aviation CEO and wife downed by bird strike and saved by shoot. GE's Catalyst turboprop engine earns FAA green light. FAA finally ramps up air traffic controller hiring. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Porto Aviation CEO and wife downed by bird strike and saved by shoot. The CEO and chairman of Porto Aviation Group encountered an emergency in his Risen 916 ISV ultralight while attempting to set another new speed record. A bird strike may be to blame for the accident. Porto Risen 916 ISV, registered as India X-ray 068, took off from Alzate Brianza Airport at around 0715 while attempting to certify a new top airspeed of 450 kilometers per hour. At around 0810, the aircraft was reportedly struck by a bird. The impact shattered the canopy while fragments hit the two occupants in the face. The injuries likely made an emergency landing difficult, though it seems that the pilot had extended the flaps and landing gear to attempt it. The onboard emergency parachute was deployed to slow the descent. The Rotax 916-powered plane landed upside down in the trees against a stone wall, just a short distance from several houses. The pilot, Alberto Porto, and his wife suffered significant injuries but survived. One was stabilized and airlifted to a Bergamo hospital, and the other was transported by ambulance. Alberto Porto is the CEO and chairman of Porto Aviation Group, which designed and produced the Risen 916 ISV he was flying. Alberto Porto set a record in the Risen last summer by completing an 11-hour transatlantic crossing without refueling. After the break, Bombardier delivers 1,000th Challenger 3500. Meet the first of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury. An aircraft worthy of the name and indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most, time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. Direct Fly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single engine, two seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple all metal aircraft design provides low maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Bombardier delivers 1,000th Challenger 3500. Bombardier announced the delivery of its 1,000th Challenger 3500 Super Midsize BizJet and celebrated the event in a special ceremony at Bombardier's Challenger Delivery Center in Montreal. The aircraft was purchased by long-standing Bombardier customer JM Family Enterprises. More than 700 Bombardier employees and invitees attended the celebration, during which the Bombardier team handed over the ceremonial keys of the Challenger 3500. 2025 National General Aviation Awards recipients announced. The Board of Directors of the General Aviation Awards announced the 2025 National Honorees for National Flight Instructor, Aviation Technician, and Fast Team Rep of the Year, which will be presented at AirVenture 2025 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The recipients of the 2025 National GA Awards are Adam Boyd of Cabot, Arkansas, the 2025 Certified Flight Instructor of the Year, Samuel Bo Hardison of Mountain View, Arkansas, the 2025 Aviation Maintenance Technician of the Year, and Jocelyn Slagle of Newcastle, Pennsylvania, 2025's FAA Safety Team Representative of the Year. Fairchild and Travel Air celebrate 100 years at Oshkosh 2025. Two historic and iconic aircraft types from the golden age of aviation between World War I and II, Fairchild and Travel Air, will be celebrating their centennial years during the 72nd annual AirVenture Fly-In and Convention July 21st through 27th at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Each of the aircraft will be featured on the flight line with programs and activities to be held together with the type clubs for both. All owners of both aircraft types are invited to participate in the centennial activities. Boeing selects Collins for F-15 EX ejection seats. 
Collins Aerospace announced it will provide 144 of its ACES-2 ejection seats for the F-15 EX program, the latest upgrade to the F-15 Eagle two-seat fighter platform. Collins says that its advanced concept ejection seat, also known as ACES, has saved more than 700 lives since 1978, and more than 6,000 of them are in service with 29 Air Forces globally, including all 15s and F-16s. They have proved reliable and, compared to other ejection seats, have shown a rate of spinal injuries at less than 1%. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. GE's Catalyst turboprop engine earns FAA green light. General Electric recently announced that its latest turboprop engine design, the Catalyst, has completed certification testing and received the FAA's nod of approval. The Catalyst is slated to make its operational debut with the new Beechcraft Denali next year. The engine manufacturer unveiled its plan to design an advanced turboprop nearly 10 years ago. GE aimed to create a next-gen turboprop in the 1,000 to 1,600 SHP range that could compete with the ever-popular Pratt & Whitney PT-6. Its ATP first ran in December 2017 and was officially dubbed the Catalyst in 2018. 23 engines, 190 component tests, and 8,000 hours of operation later, the Catalyst finally received FAR Part 33 certification from the FAA. The testing process took much longer than initially planned due to the regulator adding more than 20 requirements to its certification standards since the last generation of turboprops earned approval. These delays forced Beechcraft to push back the entry of service of its Denali, which will be the launch partner for the Catalyst. Denali and Catalyst will now be taking the stage in 2026. The Catalyst reportedly allows customers to save up to 18% in fuel and fly up to 10% faster in cruise. Depending on the gearbox version, the engine can put out anywhere from 1,200 to 1,400 SHP. After these messages, FAA finally ramps up air traffic control hiring. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com Welcome back. FAA finally ramps up air traffic controller hiring. Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy has announced a plan to supercharge hiring at the FAA Academy. The initiative aims to speed up the hiring process, increase salaries, and attract more applicants. The program was unveiled during a visit to the Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center in Oklahoma City. Its goal is to ensure enough trained controllers are keeping American airspace safe. Duffy emphasized that air traffic control is one of the most rewarding careers available, and he's determined to bring in the best and brightest. To make that happen, the FAA is cutting its notoriously slow hiring process from eight steps to five, shaving at least four months off the timeline. Starting salaries for new trainees will jump by up to 30 percent, and those who score well qualified on the air traffic skills assessment test will be given priority for academy admission. Those who make it through the rigorous training can expect to earn an average of $160,000 within three years. The NTSB reported 117 aviation accidents in the first two months of 2025, with 16 of them being fatal. The hiring push is part one of a larger plan. Duffy says he, along with the FAA and the DOD, will request $1 billion to update outdated ATC systems. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.